I still remember that uh, a scene, a banker come to our house to check the, all the assets with the checklist and uh, they say going to uh, seal the house and you sell all the, all the equipment in our house. So yeah, I think the, the, the moment is uh, really unforgettable. But also it's the first time that we break through a 1 billion sales revenue in our group. And we set a higher goal for this year, which is 1.8 billion we want to achieve uh, by this year. So we actually uh, tackle a lot of new channels. First of all, Raymond, thank you so much for coming on the show and congratulations for winning the uh, Vistage Leadership Award. Thank you, Cynthia. Now let's go back to the beginning. Uh, Street Tana, it was founded by your parents, I think it was back in 1979. Yep. You chose to join the business at 19 years old. In fact, leaving college to join the business. Could you talk about that experience and what, what led you to make that decision? Yeah, uh, because uh, during uh, my parents started the business, we are in the poultry industry. And uh, uh, I still remember that during 1997, uh, LA's uh, economic crisis, and our family business nearly belly up. And yeah, there's a reason why, you know, our company have to uh, start it all again from zero. And we participated into uh, this uh, wholesale uh, retail industry, supermarket industry. And there's a reason why, because during that time, we need to start over again from zero. I have to uh, stop my study and join our family business since I was 19 years old. 19 years yeah. old. So leaving school and jumping into the business, it must have been a big change for you. And I'm sure it has shaped you as a person as an and also a businessman. Yeah, it's just like, you know, you know that during a college time, uh, is a kind of a like honeymoon, you know, uh, a time when I was study uh, journey, but I have to uh, make the decisions uh, to join back our family business because that is a part of my responsible. And during that time, my parents is so struggling because we have to start it over again from zero, just uh, with the frozen mud, uh, you know, kind of like just for our surviving mode during that time. So I still remember that. Uh, a scene, a banker come to our house to check the, all the assets with the checklist and uh, they say going to uh, seal the house and you know, sell all the, all the equipment in our house. So yeah, I think the, the, the moment is uh, really unforgettable and also the, during uh, this process is a, is a journey that really uh, shaped me. Uh, like what that must uh, have today. left a lasting impact on you, yeah. like seeing people coming over and possibly losing your home. Yeah, so I think because before this, we were the top three poultry industry player in the market in Klang Valley. So we have a lot of uh, these giant uh, customers, uh, corporate uh, customers, example like Grinting, Star Cruise, Hilton Group, Hard Rock, all is our clients. Mm. Uh, because of the cash flow problem, you know, uh, we unable to sustain during that time. So uh, my father uh, has to make uh, decisions to sell everything, okay. uh, included our chicken farming business, our chicken slaughterhouse business. So a lot of our properties, we sold everything then to clear all the debt. Uh, during that time, I still remember it's not easy for him to make the decisions. After, after he made the decisions, actually he, in front of me, he threw the whole phone on the floor. So you, you, you can imagine uh, for his uh, 20 over years uh, journey to uh, make that decision is not easy. But uh, today, when we look back, yeah, there is a process. Yeah. And at what point uh, did, did the retail or wholesale supermarket idea came about then? During that time, because we started, my, my father started the business, just uh, want to uh, survive. We, our idea to start that uh, small market is just the idea with the started with the frozen markets. We want to sell purely frozen uh, foods items only. But slowly, because uh, the request from the customers, they want more items, more groceries and fresh produce. So this is how we made today business concept. Yeah. Okay. So this is from one single shop in Selayang, Correct. and now you have eight huge supermarkets across Selangor and the Klang Valley. What do you think helped? Solidify Street and Nuts brand, um, and what changes did you bring to the company for you know, to to shape its growth to what it is today? I think um, we can get today result is because of our people, our team, 
And uh, you know, uh, previously when we started, I invited a lot of uh, my friends and my uh, cousins join our company to uh, support our business operations, existing us. Uh, but until today, because the our business uh, size and you know is like scaling up already, uh, we have to uh, recruit a lot of uh, corporate managers join us. Uh, just because we need uh, a, a corporate sentiment join into our 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 business, our, our company, uh, to make a lot of things more systematic, mm -hmm. and uh, we're also doing a transformation in our company. We're doing a lot of uh, centralizations works and also standardizations work in our company. Yeah. Okay. Now I found Street Art is so interesting because it's not just any supermarket. It's twenty four hour. It is um, with a five star experience, but wholesale prices. Talk yeah. to us about this concept and what were the gaps that you saw in the market and when you decided to start this concept. Yeah, because we started our business in the uh, wholesale market area, which is Selayang because Selayang is a very well-known place that people will call a food most centralized area in Malaysia. So uh, a lot of people they will know the wholesale market in Selayang. So uh, with this kind of environment, we have a lot of experience and we have a thought that why the wholesale business have to be in the place that you know is like you no know, standard or you know uh, very wet and smelly. So. Uh, there is a reason why we, we want to bring in some new sentiment into the wholesale business and to make people uh, believe that even though we are doing wholesale business, we also can shop in a very good environment. So uh, this is the value that we want to bring for the, the wholesale industry. Yeah. And clearly it has succeeded. 2023, your sales was 1 billion ringgit. That's yeah. amazing. How did you do it? So yeah, this, this, this is uh, the goal that we set uh, during 2022 and actually our original goal that we set for last year which is uh, 2023 is uh, 1.5 billion but we failed to achieve it but also it's the first time that we break through a 1 billion sales revenue in our group so uh, but we didn't uh, maintain our last year goal uh, for this year and we set a higher goal for this year which is the 1.8 billion uh, uh, we want to achieve uh, by this year so we actually uh, tackle a lot of new channel. We won't uh, like you know doing what the industry player they are doing, which is uh, it just open supermarket door, waiting customers to walk in, and we do a lot of sales approach outside. So how are you different from other players in the market? Yeah, in ST Group, uh, we have our sales hunting team, which is they will uh, every day go to a different uh, potential customers uh, door by door to knock their their door to approach them our services. So I think this is uh, the way that uh, make our our growth. Yeah. Okay. Now I, I understand that SD has uh, over two thousand three hundred employees across all your outlets, right? How do you, as a leader, keep everyone in line, motivated, and aligned with your vision in to you know to achieve that 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 great figure that you are looking at? Yeah, uh, I think with the traditional way, uh, if we want to go further, it's quite challenging. So uh, we attended a lot of trainings and we learned a lot of uh, uh, working tools uh, to align all our vision, mission and core value with our peoples, make everyone uh, more clear uh, where we want to go. So I think um, we have results, I mean we have today results and uh, we have the way to make our people more clear about our direction is about training and learning. I think learning is, you know, is something that compulsory uh, if uh, we are the entrepreneur that we want to grow our business. So yeah, these are our directions and we, we did a lot of trainings in our company. Uh, the external trainer come to train our people, our internal trainer trainings. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite interesting that you said that you want to, you know, you brought in corporate um, figures to help you run the business and do all this training. Ultimately, how do you see ST as a group? Moving forward, what's your what's your 10, 20 years plan if you have? Actually, uh, our did like like this year uh, regarding the numbers. Uh, this year, our target revenue is one point eight billion. For our five years goal, we want to achieve uh, twenty outlets uh, in Malaysia and to achieve a three billion revenue. So we also set our ten years uh, goal. Our ten years target is to achieve. Uh, 60 outlet uh, in Malaysia or we will go to Indonesia markets okay. and to achieve our 10 billion revenue targets. Okay, that's, yeah. that's, that's very uh, ama amazing how ambitious you are. But I mean, as an entrepreneur, uh, you started since you're 19. You still look very, very young. <laughs> <laughs> but I think in, in that last probably about 20 years that you've been in business, have you ever felt like 
at any point you want to give up? I know because uh, I love uh, as I you know I, I share to my team members that I love this industry I love our company I love the business and uh, for the past 21 years yeah uh, I gained a lot of experience but I always told my team uh, today I'm just 40 I'm still very young so we if we want to go far together and we want to achieve to be an icon in our industry we have to uh, put more efforts and learn more from the world champion company because we want to be number one in Malaysia, we cannot learn from number one in Malaysia. So we have to learn from, uh, uh, I mean, the, the top player in the world that mm -hmm. only be able to achieve our goal. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you share with us what are some of the, the criteria or the, some of the things that you see on, in these top players that you would like to emulate in your company? Yeah, so I think uh, the one that we are very, very uh, looking and focus into it is the culture, our corporate okay. culture. So uh, we always believe that if we have a, a, a this uh, good corporate culture in our company, then we can uh, shape a lot of good uh, talent and keep our company continue uh, grow in a healthy way. Yeah. Okay. Now, on a more personal level, um, what does success mean to you beyond the bottom line, beyond the figures? I think because our our tagline is to helping uh, people save money, time, and live better which is uh, internally uh, toward our, or our shoppers or the community or uh, Malaysian toward our country. So our direction is the same. How are we going to really create more value uh, to more people? This is always our goal. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I know you said that you have never ever felt like giving up uh, in, in your journey as an entrepreneur, but when you face difficulties, are you the sort of person that would uh, try to solve things yourself or would you look to others to help you? Um, I will I will try to use up our resources that we have uh, because I'm the person that uh, uh, have a very, very positive thinking which is I believe that every uh, problem or every challenge at least there, has, there is the three solutions to stop it it's just that how are we going to handle it so this is also a, a thought that I always uh, share to our team members yeah. okay can you also talk to us about your journey with Vistage how did you get started and why did you join in the first place yeah I still remember that uh, during uh, my first interview in the Vistage office uh, actually my friend recommended me to join a Chinese group um, a Mandarin group so by end up I, I chosen uh, uh, this uh, English group because uh, because uh, for the six years back or seven years back actually I still remember that I, I just uh, 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 speaking uh, uh, this uh, book in English and my English if to compare back for the six year, past six years actually improve a lot not only English and actually I learned a lot of uh, idea and uh, business uh, experience uh, 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 sharing from a lot of our uh, from our forum members so I think this is a thing that I gain uh, from uh, Vstage forum our Vstage group and uh, I will I will share to uh, more of our entrepreneur friends if they are able to spare up some of their time they should join this stage. Okay, it's yeah. quite interesting because you, know, you purposely chose the English group because you know that you weren't that fluent in English. Yeah. And, and how important is it as a as a leader to push yourself out of your comfort zone? Yeah, I think uh, if uh, an entrepreneur or a leader if they drop into the comfort zone, then uh, the company or their team might be in the very uh, dangerous uh, 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 environment because if the leader no more uh, motivations uh, to become a better leader or you know a, a better uh, uh, successful person so I think yeah this is just uh, maybe a responsible mm -hmm. uh, we need to really push all out it's just like uh, I have a case also like I, I have chance to choose my golf uh, trainer uh, the pro uh, I can choose rather you know a Taiwanese that will speak Mandarin easily for me to communicate with him. But end up I choose a coach from Africa, South Africa. Uh, so it's forcing me, you know, okay. to need need to speak English with him. So I think this is my way. Uh, always I will I will find a way to you know to improve uh, myself. Uh, That's fantastic. Now <laughs> I do want to stay on this stage a bit. Um, what do you think are some of the most valuable lessons you have learned or from your mentor or I mean from your chair and also your members at this stage over the years? Yeah I think uh, most probably uh, because my chair is uh, Dr. Lawrence Lim uh, I like his way, who always uh, coach me, especially during the one-to-one -one sessions. He always asks a very sharp questions uh, to me to think out of the box, really push me to the to the limits. And you know, I think this is the way that uh, I 
I was looking for, you know, some, somebody will always uh, push our limits toward another level. Uh, I think this is really the value that I, I gain, you know, from Dr. Lawrence Lim and also uh, Vistage platform. And going back to what you said earlier, it's all about continuous learning, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so finally, for this show, we have a tradition where we ask the person who appeared before you to leave a question for the next CEO or leader that comes on the show. So your question comes from Mr. Oi Ching Choi from Surya Jirai Electrical. So he wants to ask you, as a team leader navigating market changes, how do you keep your team agile, innovative, he has two questions for you. Okay. And how do you encourage team members to come up with new ideas and solutions? Yeah, I think uh, these are very good questions, uh, which is uh, we will need to learn from the people outside our industry, mm -hmm. which is not only from, uh, from some bucket line. Uh, we will approach our team members, uh, go on the social media, you know, try to do more research on a lot of great company. Uh, how actually uh, make them so successful mm. and uh, not only that we also uh, always every year we will have a company retreat we will bring our team members to visit uh, the world uh, uh, a great company which is uh, last year we went to China to visit a DL called Pang Dong Lai uh, uh, this uh, supermarket in China mm -hmm. they always call them as uh, top number one supermarket player in China now so uh, we go learn from them and this year we which is we plan uh, to go uh, uh, this uh, China again to visit Costco, which is our top player in our industry in the world. Uh, so the world leading company in our industry. So yeah, I think these are the way that, you know, keep our team members have a different kind of uh, experience and we won't stay in uh, what we have today. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Raymond, for sharing your very inspiring story with us and best of luck with what you're trying to do with SD Group. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Sinjan. Thank you.